my guilty plea. I never plea bargained in this case. Unfortunately, I let a lot of people down that support me in the community, and my family, friends, so many supporters I have, not only in the Detroit area, but worldwide. So I'm very sorry for that. I'm very apologetic. I acknowledge that a situation like this will never happen again. And to all of the drivers out there, let this be a lesson. Don't drink and drive. Are you surprised that you're going to jail today? That's really all I have to say. I appreciate you guys coming out today. Let me tell you, there are two crimes that were committed in this case. The first was Jalen, who admittedly got behind the wheel when he was uh, over the legal limit. But the second crime was today. What we saw was nothing more than an elected judge legislating from the bench, having her, her own agenda, and putting someone in jail against any proportionality uh, with, with no insight or no, uh, no consideration of, of what this man has done in his life. This man has, has donated millions of dollars of his own money to charity. He's a man who grew up with a very meager background. He pulled himself up through society uh, by his bootstraps. He's uh, started schools. He's started uh, medical centers in the United States uh, and across the world. Uh, and, and what we saw today was uh, it's a miscarriage of justice. And I think it was a judicial abuse of discretion. Isn't that pretty consistent, though, with her history uh, on the bench? But that doesn't make it right. In fact, that might make it more wrong. And if you look at her average sentence for first-time DUI, a first-time offense for uh, first-time offense for. Uh, let's just. I'm sorry. Can you say your story? My name is Keith Davidson. No, put the camera on me. We just got robbed by the police department. Is it Davidson? The police are D. I D S O N. Where do you practice? In Beverly Hills, California. But I'm not sure. Were you able to finish that? No. So if you look at her, an analysis of, of uh, the judge's sentences for first time DUIs, it's 17 days. Yet she gave Jalen 20 days. After a lifetime of commitment to the community, a man who's 38 years old, who's never been arrested, never been cited for any criminal infraction at all. This is his first time DUI with very mundane facts. He was slightly over the legal limit. There was a, a very minor auto accident. No one was injured. And it, by the way, the accident took place on an icy, snowy road in Detroit in the middle of winter after it was snowing and raining for seven hours. And the, and the county has since fixed the road that the accident occurred on. It's a very dangerous intersection. There's no, there's no option to appeal a, a sentence like this. Well, sure there is. Yes. Will you appeal? We're considering all of our legal options. We'll still have to serve in the meantime, so we're going to be points considered. Not so sure about that, but we are considering all of our legal options. Go to circuit court before he turns himself in next Tuesday? Like I said, all of our legal options are being considered at this time. Just so I'm clear, you say she's abusing her power, but it's within her discretion in the state of Michigan under this law. But she had a 93 sentence she could have imposed, and she gave him 20 of those 90 years. Yes, but the judge also said something that was very interesting, that it's her job to protect the community. It's not her job to protect the community. It's her job to be a fair and impartial judge and to look at each case individually. What she has, in essence, done is she's she has created and legislated her own minimum mandatory sentences for first-time DUI offenders. And that is a per se abuse of discretion, judicial discretion. And judges do have discretion, but they must execute it fairly and reasonably. And that's something that we'll look at.